Good evening, everybody. My name is E.R. Anderson. I'm the executive director of Keras Circle. Keras Circle is a nonprofit programming arm of Keras Books. Keras Books is the South's oldest independent feminist bookstore. We are joined tonight by Auburn Avenue Research Library. Um, they are here to help drop some knowledge in the chat and help enrich our experience of tonight. You can tell we're already being goofy because this is kind of old home week. Um, we are joined by Regina Bradley in conversation with Kiese Lehman. And I was saying, it's always important to me to honor people's credentials because they work hard for them, but also to honor all the other ways that people show up in spaces. So these folks have many credentials and all the things, but what's most important to me is um, how they show up in authentic ways for our literary community. Um, they show up for young folks, they show up for old folks. Um, these are two of the most generous people that ever come through Keras always keep it real, always so kind, um, and offer to do stuff um, for, for new writers, for emerging writers. Um, and it's, you know, it's not everybody's like that. Um, so one of the things I was most excited about, this is one of my favorite novels. When it came out, it was one of my favorite novels. Rereading it in this edition as it's meant to be gave me a whole new experience of it. I think also the benefit of time, you know, between the two editions gave me a whole new experience. And I imagine some of the folks in the audience are gonna feel that way too. It's like revisiting old friends, but we've lived through a lot of stuff between when this book was first written. And in some ways the culture has caught up to where this book, you know, started. Um, right. So I'm really excited to just get to sit back and listen to this conversation. I wanna encourage folks, put your questions in the chat if you have them, but otherwise just make yourself at home um, and enjoy this uh, this front porch conversation, as Regina likes to say. I'm thrilled <laughs> to have both of you here. Oh man, what's up? What's up? What's up? <laughs> I'm just so proud of it, though. Y'all see this? See, look at that shit. Look at that shit. Flippers, 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 flippers. Because how you? Oh, um, it's a, it's been a rough, it's been rough, but we know we 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 out here. I'm happy, I'm happy, happy to be here with you. That's real, real talk. Well, ain't nobody told you to go for the Guinness record of most Zoom talks and and I got that. I'll be trying to run from death, fam. It's like it's too close. I'll be like, shit, if I work too hard, if I keep working, I'll run away from it. But you can't outrun it. You can't outrun it. So. Ooh. Whew. Okay. Um, so hey there, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, as I've been talking about on Twitters, this is a, this is the poach talk conversation. I feel like part one was in February when it was Chronicles Stankonia's time, you know what I'm saying? And now, and now it's like almost six months later, and we back, we bite Chronicling part two. This Chronicles Stankonia oh. part two. Go to part two. I want to. I want to talk about. Okay, cause see, now you're gonna have to make me rego, and and talk about this book because because. All right. Uh, the top. The can we just talk about the cover for a second? Yeah, the let's cover, talk about that cover. The covers. Okay, so you know the first cover was easy on me to teach it. You know what I mean? Cause you had like the ellipsis in the division. You know what I'm saying? It was right. like dot dot. You know what I mean? Right. And now right. It's like, it's right chin. It's right chin. Right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, you know, you, you took away some of my cool points as a, as a deep ass professor. You know Yo, what I'm I wanted it the other way. But you know what? There's a reason that they moved it, but, but yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I like it the other way as well. But it's, I like this cover way better, though. But this cover, though, is like so vibrant. So walk me through it. When you were, when you were like, I'm going to do my shit my, the way I want to do it. Like, what was it about the cover design? Were you in the meetings? Because I was in the meetings, like, I don't like that. I don't like this. Get rid of that. So why? Yeah. Did you you know, get oh, that's a beautiful question, fam. Like, I, I've i been practicing the last three years sort of like um, letting go, not, mm -hmm. trying to, not trying to control as much, trying to collaborate and when collaborating, just kind of playing my role, following the lead. And you know, I had worked with um, Diana, the, the the author, Diana and Jata. Um, she does a lot of New Yorker, uh, and she does she did my piece for Vanity Fair like, that came out last year. And real talk, you know, I just just let her read different sections of the book, and let her read sections of the book where I had I had sort of tried to describe what the covers looked like from afar, 
And mm-hmm. then I was like, just go to work. And she went, you know, like the way she did that and make, you know, for the clan. I thought that was ill. Yeah. This great shit here is so fire. And then the blue, you know, the blue leaves that appear in the middle. And obviously, ba- you know, these these keys up here that spell bays, B A I Z E. It's just, yeah. and that's it, you know, and the wave brush, man, the way the wave brush is on both sides, you know, it means a lot to me, you know. Um, so thank you for asking me about that. I get the nerd out on that cover. No, I mean, like, but I mean, it makes me think about a couple of things, you know what I'm saying, in terms of, you know, why the cover art is so important, because for a lot of folks, that's like a foreshadow about what the book's about. And, like, you kind of just guess, you know what I mean? Right. But at the same time, it's like, I was also fascinated by the foliage. Yes. The foliage. Yeah. So, like, was that, was that intentional? Because, I mean, like, this reminded me of a couple of things, a couple of types of foliage, but you know, I ain't no nature, you know what I'm saying? I don't be no nature bit like that. I'm just country. Right. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, that part of it too. It's a big part, you know. When, when, uh, and if you look on that side, like the green, you yeah. know, that, that you know, it, it's uh, I just feel like, you know, first of all, thank you for taking this book seriously. Like you, you, I think, and Imani, um, were like of the people I knew were the first people to really take this shit seriously, fam. So. I think sometimes people forget that Long Division is really a book about the outside and about, you know, that particular part of Mississippi's environment. Like most of the book takes place in the woods. Um, and I just wanted to remind people that the blues and the woods aren't antithetical. You know what I'm saying? The blues and the woods are part and parcel of the same shit where, where I'm from. So mm-hmm. I just wanted to remind them of that and, you know, play with the blues and the greens. Cause you know, them, ooh, you know, the blues and the hues and the ooze, like your boy say, you know, <laughs> you know, no, I mean, like, but I'm just kind of just like the way that it's set up, you know what I'm saying? It blew my mind when I first got the book because I'm like, okay, I know he remixed it, you know what I'm saying? We're going to get into that in a little bit, but I was like, there's two covers. And then I open it and like, I really appreciate 1985 City being upside down, like, depending on what you do. So, like, yeah. stylistically, it reminds me of like the literal upside down, you know what I'm saying? Like, when you time right. travel, the shit turns. That's right. Not, you know That's know right. I mean? That's right. But I, I'm gonna tell you one thing I didn't like about the new design. Like, tell I, so the one thing I didn't like about the new design was I loved how in the original you had the different fonts. You know what I'm saying? It's something small, right? But I'm like the different. I don't know. It was it was the different fonts. So I was like that stylistic reminder. Like okay, we switching gears. Real yeah. Quick. No. no, no. And, and the fonts. And the font sort of mimicked the tone of the time, you know? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that that 85 tone was sort of longer and you know, was slower, right? And and yeah. then 2013, the font and the tone was a lot more sort of like it had the appearance of innovation, whether innovative or not. So yeah, you're right. I like that a lot too. Yeah, the shit was innovative, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Big time now. They said, no, nah, we gonna we gonna put the money into it. <laughs> <laughs> We go. So, which which side you want me to start on? You want me to start on the the green side, which is the eighty five city, or you want to start with twenty third? Where you where you want to start? I'm saying, but that's that's the thing about the book. You can start wherever, wherever you want, want to. It's going <laughs> right. It ain't never going to end, no matter what. So, wh- whatever you want to do, we gonna do. All right. So I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start with the the nineteen eighty five city because okay. I think okay. I think that was the part that really struck me the hardest. Um, because I felt like the characters were more developed in 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 that part of the of the plot, you know what I'm saying, than the original. You know what I mean? So right. when you were, you know, when you were going into this discussion of revision, you know what I mean? Um, somebody that I often think about is Alice Walker, and in one of her essays, she talks about how like the characters sit on your shoulder and like right. talk to you and be like, You wanna do this, you wanna do that, you know what I'm saying? So I'm curious about how the characters in the 1985 version of Long Division, how they talk to you different. They didn't necessarily talk to you nice, <laughs> but yeah, they talk to you different in this go around compared to the first one. You know, that's the thing, Gina. It's like they never stopped talking. You know, I think the characters were very aware that, you know, when they went out into other people's lives via that other book, that they were going out in other people's lives via the other book. But like, I think, I mean, this can sound fucked up to people, but I don't really care. This is how I and we think as artists, like they never were happy with that shit. And they're not happy with this shit, you know what I'm saying? But but Bayes especially was like, 
that's all right. You know, like, what, what's up? Like, what you, what's up? You know what I'm saying? Like, what, what's up? You know, and so I just wanted to, because I could write an entire book called Bays, and I, I and, and I, maybe I might do that, but, 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 but I, I just wanted to give Bays a bit more, more space. Um, I wanted what was underneath her bed. I wanted her writing to be a little bit, um, not clear, but more evocative because it always was. You know what I'm saying? I wanted the language between her and City to be like demonstrably different when one of them finds out who the other one is. You know what I mean? I wanted it to be a little bit more obvious that the book is critiquing parenting in addition to white supremacy and 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 readership and all that shit. So I just wanted to make the book more that the, of what the characters always wanted it to be, and I did not succeed. But if there's another iteration, you know, if there's a if there's a film, if it's a TV version. I think there's a way where book one, season one would be 2013, season two would be 85, and then there's another season three, which hadn't, hadn't really been written yet. Yeah. Yeah, because I mean, like, I think with with the remix, you know what I'm saying? I felt like the reader was forced to pay more attention to the nuances of each one compared mm -hmm. to the first version where it was back and forth. You know what I'm saying? So right. it was like that, that, that back and forth, which I, it was a, it was it wasn't necessarily a more dynamic novel, but I felt like okay, because it was like it was hard to read this novel, Key. It was hard to read this novel because I had read it and studied it and wrote about it, and I was like, "Well, where's this and what's that?" Right, right, <laughs> right, right. Um, it still I, exists. I, the other novel still exists. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, like I mean, like I feel like this is like I feel like this version of Long Division is the one in the book that City and Lavanda start to read. Right. This one. That's this what one. it is. That's what, that's what yeah, that I feel is. like it's, it's, it's that one. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I yeah. think it added to the, the the mystery of where the Long Division book came from, which makes me think about like the talking books and talking right. heads. Right. You know what I mean? So, you know, one of the characters in the book that I really want you to talk about, because folks are getting on my nerves about this, but one of the main characters in the book, believe it or not, is Melahatchee itself. Definitely. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, like, can you talk about? Because I felt like it was more dynamic. It was more rich. You know what I'm saying? Like, you get, a, and especially what you did with my mind. I was like, yes. Like, give us some more. You know what I'm saying? Give us some more of that. You know what I mean? So, when you think about like Melahatchee, where did it come? Like, first of all, where did it come from? The idea of Melahatchee, because I, I gave my theorization, but also like. What does it mean to center black folks in a in an imaginary South in ways that haven't been done, you know, by by people's favorites who shall not be named? <laughs> I know I, I I came here just to hear you talk shit about Faulkner, you know. <laughs> Every time if we together, you ain't talking shit about Faulkner. I'm I'll be mad. I'm gonna be mad. Um, but you know, a lot of it was thinking about you know what Faulkner did with his imaginary town, what Jasmine did. Um, and I was in this place where, in some way, like the culture of it was very much like Scott County, Mississippi, which is not on the coast, which is like central eastern Mississippi. But also, I wanted it to be influenced by a lot of what's happening on the coast. So I looked into mm. this town called Waveland. And so it, it is. It's an imaginary, like mostly black town where white people have a lot of power, which is like a lot of our towns in Mississippi. You know, I think people who don't live where we live don't understand that there are like towns that are black, you know what I'm saying? Right. Not just cities, like they're towns that are black. And so, you know, I wanted to create and imagine, you know, a, a town that didn't exist. There's a town called Pelahatchee that exists in, in Mississippi. And I just wanted to like change it up a little bit. And you, you know, you read it right. Like, you know, when you've written about Pelahatchee, like that's, that's it. Like, that's exactly what it, that's exactly what it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I'm like, I mean, like even still, even in 2021, you know, well, well fuck it, I'm gonna do it. I'm, I'm gonna talk, do my, talk my shit. Yeah. I just, I don't understand, man, because it's like folks are still so gung ho on collapsing southernness to mean what's comfortable with white folks. This is from right. a white perspective, you know what I'm saying? And when you and when you decenter that, you know what I'm saying? You get characters like so sad, formerly known as <laughs> Pot Belly, right? You know, what I'm saying? who don't know what to do with that. You know what I mean? Right. And I right. Just, and, I, and I'm, 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 I'm sick of it, first of all, like I'm, I'm sick of it because I'm like, if folks are only using Southern white literature to talk about Southern black experiences, like you just missed the whole boat. You know what I'm saying? 
So it's like, folks, I mean, like with you and especially with Mimi, you know what I'm saying? I was like, oh, well, she's the heir to the Faulkner throne. I'm like, nah, she ain't the heir to the Faulkner throne. They're not the heir to nothing. They the first on Game of Thrones on there. They the first of their name, Mother of Dragons and shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's, not, not, it's not the same because somebody like a Faulkner use black folks as props, as, as stand-up, you know what I'm saying? So that his main white characters can have these epiphanies about, oh, right. this is a human experience, but even that human experience doesn't complicate black folk. That's right. And, and, when, and when, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. No, you, I'm just saying, we sick of that, we sick of that. Yeah, and when, and when you're, I mean, this is, this is, I mean, this is, I mean, I, I think Go Down Moses that Faulkner did is dope. And Faulkner, I mean, I, I think what Faulkner did with um, A Rose for Emily, just like on a yeah. technical level. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just yeah. Funny. You know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of shit. But, but, you know, when I was in school, like the, like the, like the unintelligible that, that mm-hmm. came along with reading Faulkner was necessarily like hoisted as like, like, like not, not what we should aspire to do as writers, but what we should aspire to understand is readers and not understand the text, but understand that it's unintelligibility was like brilliance. And like, okay, then so so if you're gonna tell me that unintelligibility is brilliance, actually, I don't even know if it's unintelligible, then you need to explain to me then how when we do something differently, often it's not just seen as not brilliant, but 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 not whatever. But like this book don't give a fuck about what they think and, and say about <laughs> us or yeah. the you know what I mean on on that yes. level because it's it, it's too much it's too much there's too much richness richness and when you talk about epiphanies that are born on caricature that's not mm-hmm. epiphanies you know what I'm saying yeah. that's the thing about yeah. the thing about that's the thing about I mean the worst of Faulkner the worst of Faulkner is that it, it, it is often like it's it's embellished racialized sentimentality that does not is not aware of itself and so like epiphanies born on caricature don't really work and in this book. I mean, I try to avoid that, but there's a way you can make the argument that, like, you know, like I'm making caricatures out of the two Mexican kids at the at the thing. I mean, it's different because the book doesn't rely on that. It's not as motor or as fuel. But mm-hmm. yeah, yo, I'm just trying to like one, one do right by the characters in my head, and right. two do right by the tradition that raised us. Right. And that that tradition doesn't necessarily have to be like like antagonistic to Faulkner or wealthy. Mm-hmm. But I'm definitely not gonna jing it for I'm definitely not finna bow down to that shit. Like, you know, but like that- we here. We here. They got they their ghosts know it too. Whether like motherfuckers who read them know it or not, these motherfuckers know we out here. You know, our characters and our stories and, and our interpretations and our theories are out there. And we're not out there fighting and jousting with them. We out here doing our thing and they over there peeking at us. They see us, but like whatever, you know. Yeah, and I'm mean, like, you you trying to write about some shit you don't understand, you know what I'm saying? And I mean, like, you know, I mean, like, honestly, I love A Rose for Emily, but the reason I love A Rose for Emily is because I have questions, like, right. you know, Toby just opened the door and was like, I'm out. He didn't say shit to nobody. That's the story I want. He was like, oh, yeah. this motherfucker is sleeping with dead bodies and yes. shit. That is not a yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, 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 and that And that, and that, and that Faulkner wrote it from the POV of the town. You know what I'm right. saying? For the point of view, I'm I'm like obsessed with POV and perspective things. I just think that's dope. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm trying to do something like that now, and it's hard. It's really hard to pull off a a, a, a story, definitely a novel written from the POV of a whole town. How you gonna do that? You know? Right. So. Yeah, I mean, like you know, since we since we on this this street, let's 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 stop and get a snack. You know what I'm saying? Um, I think. <laughs> One of the other things that stands out about the remix to Long Division is the use of gothicism. I feel like it's more sophisticated in this version than in the first version. And what I mean by that is, you know, the idea of mauling around with death and hauntings and and remorse and what that looks like, what that feels like. I feel like there was a particular tangibility to, especially to the grandmothers, right. you know what I'm saying, that you know, we usually don't we usually don't think about. So one of the one of the other questions I wanted to ask you was how does how did the gothic influence how you were thinking about the women characters in this book? Because I felt like the women were more gothic than city. From even from a Shalaya Crump, you know what I'm saying, to to Mama Laura to all you know what I'm saying? I'm like, it was more tangible like i felt like the the gothicism was more tangible because of the black women in yeah, the book yeah 
there was a connection there. Yeah, and we can and 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 we can house it under the gothic, but specifically, like I was writing, sort of, in relationship to, I was writing back against Flannery O'Connor's depiction of often like black women um, in her work, and I was trying to ask myself when I was writing. I remember, you know, what 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 happens when these black women characters we see in, in some of O'Connor's work actually talk to black characters you know like that's the question you gotta ask about a lot of this white shit like what happens when these characters actually talk to black characters and so right. for me i think that yes you still get that gothic you still you still get that like that that sort of ritual ritualized ceremonial like death that is the end and the beginning of a lot of our grandmamas and a lot of our homes and shit but at the same time like our gothic is going to necessarily be much more comic mm. and bodily than that than their gothic say you know for better or worse and so that's what i wanted so that's why like these grandmother characters there's so much and you know there's, there's an attention paid to of course like the way they talk the way you know they're talking from a place of loss into a place of abundance back to a place of loss back to a place of abundance. they're doing all of that shit, but they're also doing it with the reader having full awareness that these are characters who have hips that shrink that that expand that have hearts that shrink that expand, who have mouths that, you know, can whisper, can get loud, and are sometimes unaware of why they're being so loud and, and so and and, 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 and and so whispery. But that has everything to do with the way like death actually like creates like, you know, our houses be they be they, you know, ranch style houses or whatever the fuck, or fucking like shotgun houses, like the one I grew up in. So the gothic and particularly like Flannery O'Connor is, is all up in this book, you know, or writing against that and embracing it. You know what? And Jamie Hatley the goat. And Hadley got me got me really going on that gothic uh of like a year and a half ago. So <laughs> she really told me to step more into it. And Sarah Broom, you know, she was telling me one yeah. time, she was like, yo, you know, I like your work and all that, but like how come ain't no how come there ain't no houses? How come there ain't no insides? How come there's mm -hmm. no black home spaces? And that to me was a question of not just like the way the prose is written, but a question of like the Southern black Gothic, you know what I mean? Like you gotta be able to describe some of these home spaces. And I didn't do that well enough in the first draft. I mean, the first book or this book, but I'm working on it on something new I'm doing now, so. Yeah, I mean, but like that interiority, I think is such a, I mean, like, you know, to, to borrow from Morrison a little bit, I mean, you're doing a little bit of literary archeology span here, right. you know I mean? because right. for so long, you know, you have, the, the go-to canonical Southern black writers, which is all of three or four people, Alice right. Watson, Richard Wright. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. I'm still, I am still anti-everyday use, by the way. <laughs> I still can't do it. I still, I, 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 I still, I refuse. I, I can't, I can't do it. But I, but I think, you know, Sarah, uh, Sarah's thing about the, the interiority, I feel like country folks' interiority is different. You know what I'm saying? Like, as, as a country girl, as somebody who literally grew up between two plantations, <laughs> right. you know what I'm saying? I think that the interiority that you do have in this book spoke to me differently and, or was legible for me differently because I'm a country black girl. Yeah. You know what I'm mean? saying? Yeah. So I'm like, when, when, when we think about the interiority of, of country black people, you know what I'm saying? What is it that you were trying to really pull out? Because of course you have you know, the the feeling of the, the hole in the ground, which is the Underground Railroad and literally hole in the ground. Right. Akin to the hole in the wall. You know what I'm saying? Yes, indeed. Uh, so it's like all of these are, are in conversation. So, I mean, like, can you can you tease that out a little bit more? Because the interiority that you introduced in the 1985 version is different. Granted, remark, you know, intentionally from the 2013 ideas of interiority. The interiority in that shed, the interiority of Lavender and and City getting lost in this talking book, right? Compared to like the interiority of that hole in the ground, that 1985 City and Shalia Crump, and then you introduce Evan, you know what I'm saying? And they're like, and City felt like, well, he was, you know, that's the babies, the schnookers. He felt like he was, you know, his game wasn't tight right. enough. <laughs> but but also like. There's a particular interiority of this is black folk shit. Yeah. Why, are we, why are we getting this Jewish boy in here trying to tell us about what it means to literally get free? So could you could you tease that out a little bit more in terms of like why that interiority idea is important? Yeah, I mean, I think that 
and and eighty five. I mean, eighty five is also the year where we get a particular kind of innovation in the internet. You know, Bayes is introduced to us sort of while on the computer, right? And when City sees what she's writing, like he sees it. You know, he doesn't understand what he's reading, but he finds out that like she has named herself something else and she's talking to these other people and, he, and they're talking in code. So he's reading the shit, but it doesn't make any sense. The same way if you right. turn that book upside down and you're reading it, it don't make any sense, right? So mm-hmm. what I'm also trying to say is like people who were brought to this nation as innovation, obviously mm-hmm. find and tease out innovation, uh, uh, interiority through innovative means, right? So like, you know, look at what we, what we have done. Like we are right. here partially right. because of the internet. Like I'm talking about yeah. you and me. You know, yeah. we creatively use the internet to delve and ultimately sell mm-hmm. a kind of interiority. And I think we initially dove into it and sold it to our people and the white folks come and they come, come trying to get it. So yeah. there's, there's a meta level that this, that's working on that. And then I think for the character world, I'm just really, really kind of like heavy handedly trying to ask people to ask themselves what it means to like get lost in holes, right? Holes in the wall, yeah. holes in the ground, holes in text, holes in logic, you know, um, holes in haunting. And so like, you know, everybody's like, the time travel shit don't make no sense. Okay. <laughs> okay. It may, it make a lot of sense if once you break away from back to the future, you know what I'm saying? Once you break away from like, what is the motherfucking time travel mechanism? Like when y'all motherfuckers been traveling through time on the backs of niggas since niggas been here. You know what I'm saying? So it's just trying to invert that. It's really just trying to invert that. You're not going to travel through time on our backs the conventional way you think we are. Why? Because we busy traveling through time in a different mm-hmm. way. You know? And folks are trying to get us to, to stop traveling through time because that shit doesn't literally mean... I mean, like, in the book, yeah, you literally time travel physically. But I mean, like, even psychologically, you know what I'm saying? Yes, Getting indeed. back in touch with, with your, your, your roots, so right. to speak. You know what I'm saying? All this comment, you know, black folks and and to this idea that you know speaking to ancestors, for example, is is demonic or but I'm like, I feel like as Southerners, that shit is amplified for us. The ancestors is everywhere. They (laughs) it depends on how deep you get, right? Like, okay, you can literally have your altar, or you can just be outside and you know, butterflies show up out of nowhere, or you know what I'm saying, a song come on the radio or something like that. For, for me, I'm like, I think that even like getting in tune with your ancestral, your ancestral ambition, your ancestral, you know what I'm saying, desires, that too is part of the interiority that folks try no to take away on a daily basis. Absolutely. You know I, mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, when you, when you quote, you know, Imani wrote this thing the other day, how come there's not more literature written about black grandmothers? And like when you were mm-hmm. raised black grandmothers, fam. You 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 are erasing a kind of not just you're a black interiority, but like world interiority, right? Like right. when you erase when you erase black grandmothers from narratives, like from televised narratives, cinematic narratives, fucking like literary narratives, and mm-hmm. and I just think you can erase black grandmothers by having an abundance of black grandmothers be there, but 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 only talking in that syrupy sweet stuff, but ain't nothing beneath it. Like there's a lot of ways you can erase that shit, and so I'm trying, and these characters are trying to say. Yeah, like these grandmother characters are grandmothers. We love them. Sometimes they get on our fucking nerves, but they're the engine, fam. Like without them, ain't nothing. Ain't nothing. Ain't none of this shit happening. So when we get the pen, when we get the pen, we got to honor them and creatively and and artistically with some integrity explore them and not just Mm -hmm. as they live, but also as they continually imagine. And that's what I was trying to get rid of, you know? Yeah, no, I mean, you know, if nobody else know, I know you know, you know, my nana boo is everything. Like the world revolves around Sarah Pearl in the same way, you know, your world revolves around Miss Catherine. You know what I'm saying? So it's, it's, it's I always appreciate seeing, you know, the nana boos. You know, <laughs> you know always. what I'm saying? Always. I, always, I always love the nana boos, uh, which I, I'm going to switch to the 2013 version. You know what I'm saying? Right. Um, Yo, like... Okay, okay. So in Chronicle of Stankonia, I use Outcast Equimini joint to theorize what you're doing with the storytelling. Do you feel like Southern hip hop influences this remix in a different way than the original? 
do you feel like if there was if the first book is like the twice upon a time there was a boy who died the first time was was andre benjamin you know what i'm saying this version i feel like is andre ben <laughs> oh, tell me more shit. tell me more because like the first version is the introduction to Kiese Layman for a lot of folks, you know what I mean? 2013 was a big year for you. So it was like folks were talking about your, your essays, which are right. 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 And then you come out with this time traveling as Southern as book. And it's like your, your, your epigraph is, you know, the, the joint from three stacks and you actually can like feel it in the novel, you know what right. I'm saying? Like, right. You know, when Shania Crump is like, you know, can you help me find me? What do you want to be alive? And I'm just like, I start a storyteller part one. Right, you know what I'm right. And, and then in this version, it's like you get more insight into a Shania Crump, you get more insight into these different folks, you know what I'm saying? And I'm like, but it hits different. It does. It hits, it hits different. It, and, and that's not a bad thing, but I'm just like, yo, how does this work? Like, you know, I was looking for like the crit references because I know like when we be talking, because y'all we be talking all the time. This 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 is yeah, this is how we talk all the time. Right. But it was like, I remember you saying that um some that big crit something oh. and high complaining really like touched your spirit in a particular way. And I was like, I still feel the crit influence, especially in the section when City goes to church and he gotta get saved. Yeah, yeah, really? <laughs> that's something that that's I mean, every time they in the church, fam, I'm I'm hearing, I'm hearing the Al Green, and I'm hearing yeah. something, you know. Yeah. yeah. So it's like, so I'm like, okay, so this is like, the, if Andre Benjamin is the introduction, then Andre Ben is, you know, yeah, the monster. You know what I'm saying? So right. the way you tackled this second version, fam, is the I mean, like it was like surgery. You know what I'm saying? You like, oh, shit, I'm gonna do that. So it was like, you know, don't get this shit twisted. Don't get me fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what's so interesting about that is like I wasn't trying to. I was had I had to talk with my editor about this. Like I wasn't trying to revise it the way I would want if I was trying to like introduce people to Long Division for the first time. Okay. I actually just wanted to get closer to part of what I was intending to do. You know when it first came out, and because the mad, you know, because the money situation was so fucked up. Right. Um, and the publisher situation for me at the time was so fucked up. I couldn't do some of the things I wanted. But the flip side is like this: this is how black the story is. When you're given limited material and limited money, we just go out there and make that art, right? And one of the reasons that I think we realized that we were kin was because you you fell into that version like deeply, yeah. and yeah. it's so much so that like fam, I had to get this book back from this motherfucker. But like I didn't want. I there's a part of me I've never talked about this shit before. I'm gonna say it. There's a part of me that didn't want to revise it because you fucked with it. You know what I'm saying? Because you fucked with it heavy. Like, you didn't just fuck with it talking to me. Like, you wrote... I, I've been in, in presence where you wrote astonishing-ass papers about it. But I think it's okay, and I'm saying this because, you know, that book is about the existence of a number of long divisions. And, like, right. you know, I'm, right. I'm, I'm... You know, people can look at us like we fucking slow and ignorant as a motherfucker if they want to. But I'm highly aware of what I'm doing by putting out another long division in the world mm -hmm. in a book that's about two long divisions. Do you know what I'm trying yeah. to say? Yeah. 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 People are like, yo, is it going to be, the, are you going to do a redo, redo a heavy? No, I'm not doing a redo a heavy. But that first long division you read told you that there was mm -hmm. another another version of this book coming. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> is that? Like, we, we just out here, oh, no, oh, 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 that shit, motherfucker. We, we out here doing some shit. Like, you know, whether it works on a meta level, whether whether those two books in the world are going to work or not, I don't think. I don't think we're going to know until we see the third. And the third mm -hmm. is going to, you know, the question is, is the third a book? Is the third an, an episode? Is the third a film? I don't know, but there's a third mm -hmm. for sure coming. So so let me ask you this. So you've read, you've read the chapter, and you know, I'm sorry, y'all, but I did. I literally wrote about this shit in the book, in my book. Uh, you read the Chronicles in Chronicles Think on you read the Long Division chapter. Yeah. So do you feel like the, the framework that was set up there still applies to this one? Because I feel like yeah. it does in some places. In some places, I'm like, it don't it don't hit the same. So I was kind of curious about, you know. I think <laughs> that it still hits this. I think it still hits hard though. Like it still it still hits. I mean, you were writing about 
if somebody was like, tell me the story along the vision, you were still writing about that story, right? Like mm-hmm. this boy finds his book, has his name in it, all these characters, blah, blah, blah. But, but some parts of it, because you are a great critic, you know, it can't be applicable anymore because, you know, it's not like this. Like the, the things aren't intertwined anymore, but they're still in the same book. And that version still exists. So, okay. it's, it's all, you know, what I'm trying to tell you, I'm, I'm, what I'm trying to, what I'm really trying to say is, I think that there's a, there's a, there's, there's like three versions of all of us, three, at least three versions of everything we create and produce. And, and, and long division is, is an exploration of like these young black kids like coming to re- coming to grips with the reality that there's a person, there's a persona, there's a super ego, and sometimes there's a person as a person as a book, there's a persona book, there's a super ego book as well. So you know, people don't want to know and talk about all that kind of shit, like you know, that crazy people like me think about all the time. Because I just wanted to give us like a, an adventure with these characters that are heavily steeped in the traditions that made us, you know. I mean, like there's the there's the character that you write, there's the character that people read, and then there's the truth about the character. Right. Only the character knows. That's what I feel. That's how I feel like that's that really comes out in, in this it. particular this particular joint. But I mean, like, I don't know, man. I just feel like the 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 round one, there was I feel like it was much more hip hop. And the reason I feel like it was much more hip hop is because there was so much overlap between a lot of your personal essays and how to slowly kill yourself and others in America. And that version, because you were probably you were working on them at the same time. You know what I'm saying? Um, but I mean, like, you know, how would you how you know if you if you were to put a play? Because I put a playlist with the original. If you were to put a playlist with this this version of Long Division, you know what I mean? You know, would it be similar to the crit hydroplaning and something? And you know, like, who would you add, folks? Would you take away? But fam, folks? But fam now I'm, I'm gonna say something to you that I know you gonna hear. Okay. Yeah, I mean this 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 joint is heavily influenced by hip hop as well. But okay. something happened between 2012, 2013, and now. Okay. And in my world, what happened is Gina May <laughs> took the place of Outkast. Jasmine took the place of Jigga. Do you know what I'm trying oh. to tell you? Angie Tate and Angie Thomas took somebody else. So so like like I am, I am always going to bow down to the hip hop influence, but the, the hip hop influenced us to create a lot of dope art between 2012, 13 and 2020, 21. And so if you can't see you in this text, I fail. If Jasmine can't see herself in this text, like I have supremely failed. If Tiara can't see, you know, if Jericho can't, like if, if you can't see the Southern writers who have been heavily influenced by among other things, Outkast being like explored and nodded to in this, so I'm not trying to be like we killed hip hop or anything, but yeah. we were influenced heavily by that shit in the last eight years. Like this shit is more of a nod to that art I love than that it was shit. to that art. You know, no, I love that. I love yeah. that. I love that shit because I mean, like it extends. You know what folks think Southern hip hop culture is. You know what I'm saying? Right. It's more right. than just the rap. But I'm mean, like, yes, we are definitely in the midst of a Southern black renaissance that I am. All the way here for it. Yeah, you know yeah. Man. I mean, I mean, I mean. Look, look at what, look at what. I mean, real, realistically, like you know, I said this when we were talking last time. Shit, 2013 for different reasons. We were both in a badass spot, you know. Yeah. And a lot of that had to do with life and you know our lives, but also just like it was just like fuck. Like, what are we creating? Is there gonna be places out there that's gonna like respect the art and the way we deal with tradition? And you know what? Like we made them other we a collective made those people deal with us in substantial ways. And so hip hop is still hip hop is running through us like I think more than ever. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. I don't. But, but I think it'd be weird for me to be like, yeah, like it's still as influenced by you know something. Gotcha. Totally. You know okay. because, because because seeing Barry hadn't come out, but you know what I mean. Chronically stake on you hadn't done outcasted conversations. You know what I'm saying? Like there's a lot of shit that just hadn't happened, and it all happened. So it has to. The book has to like uh, understand that, that the tradition that cradled it has gotten deeper, and and it needs to talk to those new 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 cradle new cradlers. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I mean, like you know, I'm in, always honored. I'm always honored when you when you shout shout me out. But I'm thinking too, like the influence that I the influences of past Mississippi writers stand out hella harder in this version. Mm. First one. And what I mean by that is 
the Richard Wright haunting of this book, especially in book one, is like, bruh. <laughs> You get the black boy, you know what I'm saying? You get that black boy influence. Um, you even get a little bit of like his short stories in this oh, a little bit. Like when, oh, yeah. When, yeah, like when when Lavender Peeler is like, you know what I'm saying? Y'all eating my children? I fell out. I was like, come on, dude. Like, I don't know if y'all see this. You saw that shit? You saw that shit? I saw that shit. shit. I, saw that shit. shit. I, was, I was like, yo, so like in, in this version, and, and also I'm thinking about, you know, your theorization of revision. You know what I'm saying? Right. What was it about Richard Wright that you revisited that helped you to kind of remix the influence, especially that section of the can you use that word in a sentence? Because that was like a brilliant mashup of Ellison and Wright. You know but here's saying? the thing though, fam. Like, you know, when I was re when I was revising this joint, um, Julia Wright, Richard Wright's daughter, sent me the man who lived underground. This was, oh, this you was, this got, was on the low. You got the you got the new new on the low. Oh, I got it. I got it. Ooh. And when I first read that shit, again, like it's it's not a it's not a reach to say you like oh oh this is where Ellison this is partially where Ellison. I don't know if you read that that the man who lived underground yet, but if you read that and you read um Invisible Man and you know how close those two were, it's mm -hmm. hard to, to 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 believe that Ellison wasn't influenced by that. Like it, yeah. it's it's actually. Uh, he was heavily influenced by that. So, yes, like, I'm fucking around with the Battle Royale and Invisible Man, but Invisible Man does not exist without the man who lived underground. And and Ellison, wow. as we know, Ellison doesn't exist without Richard Wright and Re Richard Wright's mm -hmm. love of of, of, mm -hmm. of other writers. But but it's not just that. It's the outsider, which we don't talk about with Wright much mm -hmm. at all. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, you know, if people talk about, talk about that as, you know, sort of like where Wright gets lost in his existentialism, okay, maybe. But I'm a fucking reader. Like I love when writers get lost in the shit. You get to see their obsession. So, you know, some of it was some of it was definitely like the short stories that we kind of forget. Um, but a lot of it was like the outsider and the man who lives underground. You know what I mean? Like, cause cause what but what Wright does, I'm trying to say what, what Wright does and what Ellison does and what Dostoevsky did is they place this singular figure under the ground. And right. then, you know we're gonna go into their heads and see what they're what they're doing. But like I didn't want to place my niggas under the ground alone. Like that's the whole point. Like I didn't come to this motherfucker to be alone. You know what I'm saying? Like like I we have to write. We have to create. We have to like hone those 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 states of isolation. Mm -hmm. but, but on the flip, you know what I mean? Like I wanna I wanna talk about the necessity of young black people having to go underground to creatively grieve. And yes, we Ooh. often have to sleep alone. We often have to use the bathroom alone. But the creative grieving that is meant to most to us via hip hop, blues, soul, funk, that was a collective underground grieving. And that's what I, that's what that's what I, that's what uh long division is. It's like a collective cadre of black characters creatively grieving the loss of something and trying to make it in spite of and because of that loss. That's what that book is. That's what it was, and that's what I think it more demonstrably is now. I mean, hearing you put it like that makes me think about how, again, you know, when when the original comes out, you were in a particular place. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Struggle. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, and now, you know what I'm saying? You know, whether you want to admit this shit or not, you have crossed over. You know what I'm saying? So like that. Oh, no, man, don't tell me that, my nigga. What you let, me finish, let me finish my shit. Let me finish my shit. The, re the reason that I say that is, is because, you know, you... And, then, and 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 folks, I'm not saying that this is influencing Key and, and what see as as he drank his red drank Kool Aid. Listen, <laughs> but I mean, like, in terms of folks are like, oh, Key, I say layman. They think about heavy. You know what I'm saying? They think about so like all of these these pieces of art that you manifested from that collective grievance that was once only legible underground or below the Mason Dixon line. You know what I'm saying? touches folks in such a way that they feel like they can connect to that. But I'm cool with that. But I'm also cool with the fact that you still are having this love letter, this conversation with, with black Southerners like, yeah, everybody might be reading this shit, but don't worry. I see you. I got mm. you. Right. So it's like that, that idea of collective grief still extends back to that shit. I was saying about interiority. Yes. You know what I mean? Yes. So it's like, 
with the long divisions and the heavies and then Mimi comes out with men we reap and then you know what I'm saying you know sing you know sing unburied sing which is perfection okay I'm like what does what does that collective grief look like for us now because it seems like all our eyes are on the south again right they want to they want to flatten it out but it's like when we think about that collective grief and i'm thinking about the ugks and the scar faces and and the and the dungeon family you know what i'm saying what is it that you want this book to remind folks about why it's important to recognize where that collective effort and collective grief come from yeah that's a beautiful 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 ass question um okay it's gonna sound like i'm sidestepping okay i doing a little euro step but you know i used to hate when jay had this line jigga was like i didn't cross over i brought the suburbs to the hood you remember i don't know if you remember that line and i just used to be like what does that mean <laughs> You didn't cross over. You brought the suburbs to the hood. And and I'm not at all trying to say that's what we are doing or I have done, but I think we have to slow it down, fam. Like, all of us, none of us were just, like, picked to be the next one. Mm. Even even Mimi. We know right. she the greatest. But right. First of all, even though them two National Book Awards and fucking MacArthur and all that other shit, a lot of motherfuckers still don't understand the fucking majesty of, of what that woman is doing. And I don't right. think she's doing it at the expense of our South and our Southernisms just because more eyes are on it. Mm-hmm. I'm going to say that about her. About me, fam, like, I... I don't know. I want to be honest about that. You know what I mean? Because when we were doing this shit back in 2012, 2013, it was like we knew we were sitting on fire. We knew that the fucking world sort of didn't give a fuck about the fire we were sitting on. And we knew we were going to make the world pay pay attention to us if we lived. Mm -hmm. We knew it. So I'm also I think we know that tomorrow, like, you know, you know, things could change, you know, but what's not going to change is this. We squatted up now. Like, that's right. what I want people to understand. Like, I was creating that shit. I created Long Division, How to Slowly by My Goddamn Self. I didn't have you. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Like, I had you when I wrote Heavy. I had you with this revision. I got you with the new shit I'm doing. That I'm doing some shit with TV and film. I got you now. And so mm-hmm. I think your question is important. But I also think what's more important is that now, like, the South that we are exploring, I think, I think the rigor of that South can be more, like, uniquely and rigorously explored because we're more connected now. And yes, we happen to be more connected and these people seem, seem t- tend to be looking at us in ways that they didn't look at us before. But if you don't trust their eyes, I don't think it really matters that much. You know what I'm saying? Like that's what that's what that's what long division is also about. Like, yeah, these motherfuckers eyes like, you know, cities like why the fuck y'all let these people's eyes dictate so much? Really, he's just trying to get some adult to talk to him about what the fuck happened on that stage. Yeah. Yeah, and the adults will talk about it because they're so fucking traumatized and they're so convinced that the only way you can raise black children is to make them presidential. And when they fail to be fucking presidential, you got to shame them. You got to send them to that goddamn ward. You got to do all of that shit. And I'm saying like, yeah, I'm giving that to people who might not be aware of that, but I'm also giving it to people who are hyper aware of that. And we're mm-hmm. creating like extended loving community, art community around that. And, you know, we came this motherfucker to last. And I just think, like, if we last via, like, some of these eyes, blah, blah, okay. But I know we're going to last because we're seeing each other in more profound ways than I think we saw each other before. That's real talk, fam. Like, I believe that. I believe that. No, I'm with that. And, and, and you know, down, like, four flats. You know what I'm saying? I don't I don't take that for granted. You know what I mean? Um, but, yo, the other thing I was thinking about, too, is, is – um, one, the one thing I really love about Law and Division is that, like, you're reminding folks on the low, like, yo, yeah, this is Mississippi, but all Mississippi ain't the same. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, Jackson is one thing, and the coast is another thing, and, you know, we in conversation, but we ain't the same thing. You know what uh-huh. I'm saying? So it made me think about, you know, I, I've talked about haunting. You know what I'm saying? Katrina haunts this book, too. Yeah. You know what I mean, and I and and how you introduce the twins, fam. <laughs> yeah, 
like, oh, okay, this is this what we're doing? Uh, so I mean, like, you know what I'm saying? Can, can, you, can you talk about that a little bit? Because you've had a little bit more time, you know, with Move, like time is, you know, we're approaching like the, what, the 16th anniversary next in, in August, you know what I'm saying? Um, it's, it's not necessarily less, it's not necessarily staler, but I mean, like, it's not as fresh as it was probably when you were beginning to write long divisions. Right, right. Could you, could you talk about that a little bit? I mean, like, how is Katrina a haunting character in, in, in this version of the novel? Yeah, you know, I, I mean, even with the first one, Gina, like, I never wanted Katrina to exist, like, outside of its relationship to Jackson, not just to Mississippi. Because like that's why you know you, you don't see many Katrina novels or or Jackson novels. You don't see many Jackson novels about Katrina. Many Katrina novels about Jackson. But, mm-hmm. but like you know Jackson, like Jackson, black ass Jackson, ninety percent black Jackson, named for Andrew Jackson, a fucking white savage, right? right. Like yeah. so 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 like like I grew up in a in a in a in a place that soulfully had been declared dead once you named it that, but who black folks, you know, we had to re-fucking invigorate that shit. Y'all motherfuckers named us Andrew Jack. I grew up on Ross Barnett Reservoir, named for another fucking savage ass white motherfucker, right? My mama moved out to Ross Barnett Reservoir uh, when I was in 11th grade. And yeah. so I'm, I'm just trying to say, one of the things I think we do with Katrina sometimes is we let it exist as this like unique, like like terrifying, like, like, like um, environmental, um uh disappearance, right? Like something that dictated like so many of us disappeared. Mm-hmm. But motherfucker, like we from we from Mississippi, first of all, and and, and in Jackson, nigga, like motherfuckers was coming from all pl- parts of the world to come there and try to fight for black niggas and disappear in the next day like it wasn't shit. Wow. You see what I'm saying? And so 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 I'm just trying to say like I want to talk about Katrina. I talk about Katrina in there. We need to talk about how the fact why, the, why people for some reason never talked about Mississippi when they talked about what happened um, down there on that coast. But I just think when you talk about environmental degradation and you talk about disappearances of Black folks, you mm-hmm. you, you can't you can't not talk about that and talk about the blackest city in the fucking state is named after Andrew Jackson, and Andrew mm-hmm. Jackson made sure plenty of niggas disappeared. And I'm just saying, so it's I, I wanted to in some way make make Katrina not as uniquely special as it's often written about, but it's it's uniquely special for sure. You know what I'm trying to say? It's, yeah, it, but not no, because I mean, like it's, it's like it's 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 deeper than that, right? It's it's yeah. more visceral for folks about Katrina. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah. And and you could see it in who talks about it in their in their art, right? So right. like somebody like Beyonce gives you the formation video. You know what I mean? And I just remember the conversations with friends who were who are from New Orleans who were like, yeah, that shit don't sit right with me. I'm still traumatized from the water. You know, the water. You know what I mean? And 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 the connection is that like if you look at like the J sets, the Prince and J sets, and you and you look at like who actually like taught the J sets to do the J set, it was a queer brother who actually mm-hmm. like inspired that J set line dancing that that the Sonic Boom of the South and a lot of HBCUs have that ultimately inspires among other things formation. You know what I'm trying to say? Like so like I'm trying to say to like what 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 we often see as like singularly Katrina is heavily influenced by like blacknesses in other parts of Mississippi and vice versa. Because when that shit hit the coast, all my motherfucking people came to Jackson. You know, like my auntie started running a daycare center for four people who've been dispossessed from from the coast who came to Jackson. And so, mm-hmm. like, I just wanted to, without doing a history lesson, just just sort of like let the connections between those two places sort of like invigorate the soul of the novel, even if it's not explicitly written in the text. No, but I think I think that's what black folks and you know do in general is that you know there's a significant event that happens. We might not name it as said a significant event, but it has a ripple effect. We continuously oh, yes, indeed, and come come back to that. And I think too, what what I really appreciate is even though Katrina is rightfully so recognized as such a traumatic event, I think that the thing that I love about your writing, you know what I'm saying, and Mimi's writing and Tiara and everybody is is like. It's not just the trauma. Oh no! You know what I mean? Because like trauma is like the main frame for Southern Black folks. Still, still, right? Even if like Southern Black creators are like, no, no, no. I mean, okay, yeah, that's part of the shit, but that ain't the entirety of the shit. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, 
I, I think that that's the one thing that I really appreciated was that that emphasis, right? Um, and then and then you know ultimately I, I want to want to hear your thoughts on this because you don't shy away from trauma, but it's not the be all end all to how people understand your work, even though that might be the subject matter. You know what I'm saying? So I'm I'm curious about you know your approach to trauma and long division. Is that how much I'm trying to make sure I say this right? Okay, so the trauma in long division is visceral and it's tangible. The trauma in heavy is real shit because it's autobiographical. And I was wondering if like the way that you grappled with trauma in heavy influenced how you reapproach that topic in long division. Yeah, and vice versa. Like okay. I was able to deal with what people call trauma in heavy because of the way I wrote that first long division. Like. This is just also just technical. Like it's there's so many scenes in Long Division. Like yeah. you know, when we think and talk about trauma, sometimes I think people forget that like once you dramatize trauma, you necessarily mm -hmm. are breaking one like stronghold that trauma has on the creativity. Like mm -hmm. trauma doesn't want us to actually like create scenes because creative dramatizing scenes means you necessarily have to create perspective, whether you know it or not. You have to deal with some every other character who's in the scene has some feelings and some trauma and some joy that they bring. So once you write scene, I'm not saying that, tr that, that scene work necessarily like obliterates all residual trauma, but once you write scene, you have to recast the way you feel like that trauma sits in you and i couldn't get to that in heavy unless i wrote long division and how to slowly and all those essays you know what i'm saying so but in terms of that i also just don't think we know what we're talking about not, not, not us necessarily not you but me i think we're using that word a little bit too much i don't i don't know i don't i don't know that i know what i mean when i say trauma but what mm -hmm. i do know is that the saddest shit in my life i can't get into it unless i find some sliver of absurdity or comic like yeah that night that I always talk about when we was in a badass place, like mm -hmm. I'm smiling when I talk about that shit, right? Um, and then I can talk to you, you know. And if I was to talk about it, the entryway into me talking about that would be like, man, remember we was at that damn restaurant, and I was like, man, who was all these white motherfuckers around me? You were looking mad, you know. That's how I would enter into that conversation, and then I go back to, like, and man, we had that conversation. So I'm always, I'm, a, I'm too weak. I got to find like that sliver of comedy into like, you know, whether somebody you know, experiencing, you know, molestation or sexual abuse, me, or whether it's somebody like, you know, putting a fucking foot in my goddamn chest or whether it's my mama putting a foot in my chest. I got to find the, the humor in that. And I don't think you can find the humor in that unless you do the scene work. So I'm not av avoiding the question. I'm just saying, I think scene work is really crucial to, to, to doing like this trauma writing, if that's what people want to call it. You know, yeah, I think I, you know, I, I, I like that because I think that there's a, a thin line between recognizing grieving and recognizing trauma. And I think yeah. that the, line, the line is the humor, you know what I'm saying? To laugh to keep from crying. There's a reason that folks that folks say that because I'm like, if I don't laugh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna beat your ass. Like, <laughs> if I don't yeah. laugh, I'm gonna, yes. I'm gonna throw these hands, you know what I'm saying? So I just, I really think that that's 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 super important. And then I have. One more question, and then I'm gonna open it up to the to the questions that are in the box. So all the good people that are in the audience, if there's a question, comments, not a mark that you like to ask the goat, PSA Layman, um, please go ahead and put that in the ask a question. Um, but I have a question about the hairbrush, fam, because <laughs> the hairbrush is such a <laughs> yo, the hairbrush is such a crucial tool in the black boy kit of self defense. <laughs> that I have questions, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> first of all, I was like, were they hard bristles? You know what I'm saying? Were they boar bristles? Were they hard bristles? Because the hard bristles give you the deeper waves. I've done my research. Yes, yeah. yes, they were hard bristles. <laughs> okay, so hard bristles, that's important. But it's like, why did you, because the, 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 the brush reminded me of Ellison's King of the Bingo game. Yeah. When the man has the what, what the fuck you call it? Like a little uh, button that's yeah. like, okay, because it, it controls the wheel, right? So it's like, you still have to deal with that. And the half city have this brush. He's like, nah, I need the brush to come talk that shit. Or I need to go, you know what I'm saying? Or let me brush it because I'm getting nervous. Like, right. what about black boy vulnerability do you feel that brush represented? 
that city might not have been able to say to the audience. You know what I'm yes, saying? Well, why yes, is that brush important? I mean, and the thing is, I say it to the audience, and what you just said, like city and lavender, but city especially is dealing with like intense case of anxiety. And I just mm-hmm. think sometimes when we talk about black kids, especially dealing with anxiety, we kind of talk about it clinically, which is important, but I also don't think we talk about it creatively. Like I was a motherfucker who had a brush all the time. My waves were horrendous. And one of the reasons my waves was here horrendous was because I wasn't really using that shit to get waves. I was using that shit when I was nervous as a motherfucker. You know what I mean? When I'm around people, when I'm around, when I was around girls who I might have liked, when I was around police, when I was around, you know, I'm, I'm brushing my hair. I was brushing my hair all the time, fam. And that's what motherfuckers around you did. Same way, you know, when we post up, we post up like this with our hands like this across our chest. Niggas ain't just holding their hands like this just because, like, we in a gang. Motherfuckers is trying to protect them guts in that heart. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like, I think, well, you know, in spelling bees, they call it mnemonic devices. But I think in life, there's a lot of mnemonic devices. You know what I mean? Like, I now over the fucking pandemic i'm always pulling my goddamn beard out because i'm nervous as fuck about life and death and everything else but that character especially is completely fucking like drowning in anxiety and he wants somebody to help him but he doesn't know how to ask he don't know what the fuck to ask for and so that's why like when that white motherfucker takes his brush and throws it like that's a shift in that book like that book shifts you know he goes i gotta get my brush you leave the stage even you gotta i gotta go get go back and get my brush and i don't know i just wanted just to tie like these tools we use sometimes to fight off these like understandable mental health issues to like black artistry. Cause mm-hmm. it's not that they're part and parcel of the same shit, you know? Yeah. So I, Cause I just, I was, I've always been fascinated by the brush. I think that was the one thing when I read it the first time that I was like, Oh, okay. This is, this reminds me of the dudes that I go to school with. You know what I'm saying? They was right. like, or the do rag. I was like, "What a do rag at, though, bro? What a do rag at? That's his own. That's his own ology. That's his own. That's his own shit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You're right. You're right. Did you but see Space Jam? No, I ain't seen it. Okay, well, I don't know if you need to see it, but there's a scene. <laughs> like, I'm not, you know, LeBron, my boy. I love LeBron. Oh, man, That's my dude. I'm not. Listen, I love LeBron, but the scene to me in that book in that movie is when he puts his do rag on, and it and it's so. It's so understated. Yeah. It's just, he just put the do rag. He just talk, he didn't there talking to his wife and he just putting his do rag on. You know what I'm saying? In a Bugs Bunny movie. Like people can talk all the shit they want about it, but that that scene made it, even though it wasn't the greatest <laughs> to me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but it's, it's again, like it's like you have you have these the the, the you know the black boy toolkit of self-defense and a brush and a do rag, you know what I'm saying? The ability to talk shit, like if you can't throw jokes. <laughs> over, you know what I mean? Over. Like it's over. It's over. over. They're gonna be like, man, that nigga over there can't talk shit. You know what I'm saying? He ain't gonna do nothing. You know what and I'm saying? You can't take a joke. You gonna get your ass. You gonna get your ass stomped. You know what yeah. I mean? Like you got to be able to bust a joke. You got to be able to take a joke. You know, like I always talk about. I wrote this essay a long time ago. I never published. It's called Back of the Bus. Because as soon as we get on the bus, we go into the back of the bus. Why? Because that's what niggas like to cut up the most at. You know what I'm saying? And you know, all kind of things. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I just, I think that that's so, so great. So the last thing I want to say to you, Keith, I mean, I tell you this all the time, but I love you. And I'm just so, so proud of, you know, the art that you continue to make and and make room for up and coming artists, novelists, fictionists like myself. You know what I'm saying? So thank you so much for being so open, so honest about the process. Um. Thank and you. so you know, you know, you know, I love me some you because I'm, I'm, we ride or die, ride or die. You know ride what I mean? So, and we, we gonna ride, we gonna ride. You know, we, we gonna tear some shit up. It's coming. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but yeah. So, Er, did you want me to take on the the questions, or did you want to moderate? I can do either one. Yeah, I think it'd be great if you take on the questions because okay, cool. yeah, you go for it. Okay, bet. Um. All right. So there's a couple of comments, a couple of questions. Key, I'm gonna go through these things and you, you know. Uh, so the first comment is from uh, Dom Alexander. So what's up, Dom? Former student of mine. So appreciate you for coming out. Uh, after reading heavy, long division hit different. It felt autobiographical because they read it in my outcast class. So there's there's that version of it. So I'm gonna have to redo the, the long division when I reteach the class again. Oh, right? okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, 
it's 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 autobiographical in that whenever I was too much, my mama sent me to my grandma. You mm-hmm. know, and 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 the point was, I'm sending you to Big Mom. I'm sending you to get some religion. But you know, cities like I was not either one of those cities. You know, I, I was in love with a a, a, a love girl like named Melcy Dobson. Um, <laughs> <laughs> grade, third grade, but like. Nah, it, you know, the, the grandmother characters are based off like the essence of who I think my grandmother is. But, you know, it's it's not, it's not, I mean, the book came alive for me when I re- when I created characteristics in City that were not of me. You know, yeah. so like, I wasn't in love with the kid named Lavander Peeler. I, I, don't, I don't think I was in love with any boy in the way City is in love with Lavander Peeler, but I was in love with my friend. You know what I'm saying? Like, I yeah. love to play football with my friends because that's what we could touch. I love to bust jokes, so that's what we could touch. And so, yeah, I wanted to explore that desire to touch boys when you feel so intimately like, you know, cis and 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 straight as a young person. But I also wanted to explore that. But to explore it, I had to create, you know, sort of heighten that relationship. So it's sort of autobiographical, but the main characteristics of City are not mine. I got you on that. Um, Denise Irvin, thank you so much for attending. Uh, Kiese, thank you for sharing your brilliant Black abundance with us. I've heard you talk about how you write in previous interviews, but in light of this reissue of Long Division, can you tell us what your revision process is like and how do you know when you're done? Woo, that's the question. How do you know when you're done? I mean, I don't, I don't, I, I'm not done. I'm, I just know when they're going to take it out of my hands so I can get my check. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> I think I think we gotta we can talk about the artistry and the commerce of this thing. You know what I'm saying? So like I've changed long division since it's come out again, and again I'm thinking a lot more now about the third book being uh, televised as opposed to being literary. Um, but but generally I just I keep on revising. I, I keep on revising things, and then when I have a due date, okay, I gotta turn it in. And my editors hate me because I'm revising until the last minute. You know that time when they're like, "All right, we can't, we can't accept anymore." Right, you right. gotta let me know that because because mm-hmm. I'm gonna keep on going. So I don't think it's ever done. I just think there's points when people think they can make money off of it, and that's not the same thing to me. Yeah. No, okay. I mean, like, and and it's something you know, folks be, folks want to be like, want to be pure and be like, "Oh no, it's all about the art." But I'm like, fam, come on now. It's all about the art. Okay. How's okay. it all about the art when motherfuckers don't even understand? I mean, whatever. Like, look at our education system. It can't be all about the art when people don't really even understand. People who buy the art, people who buy our art, like the publishers, they don't even understand what the fuck we doing. So, I mean, I can say that shit. Like, I know that's true. Like, I've had people, <laughs> I've had people give me mad motherfucking amounts of money for some shit they didn't understand. And because, you know, inter- intergenerational fucking poverty is real, what I'm going to do? Be like, nah, I ain't going to accept this motherfucking money until you tell me you really understand what I'm trying to do. Nah. Give yeah. me the money, and I'm going to mm-hmm. do my art. It's going to be packed with subtext. Your ass ain't going to know what the fuck I'm doing. Mm-hmm. And then we're going to keep it going. That's how I feel. So you ba- so basically, it's like, you know, it's something that I've been saying. is like, don't give me the can and give me the drinking gourd. You give folks the drinking gourd. Like, this is how you follow it. Okay. Yeah. You know, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely, absolutely. I love that. Um, another comment from you know C, um, asking about the structure, right? Is structure format something that you would ever revisit again? For or the uh, the structure or format for long division is something is that something you would ever revisit again in another work? And then the, the second part of that is, um, I noticed that uh, book one ends at page one fifty three and book two at one thirty five. Were there any events or themes that may have hurt to let go of to attain this symmetry? Man, see, that's what I'm saying. Most that's a reader, like yeah, because the books are parallel. Like the books, I mean, I'm I'm playing with like all stupid kind of shit I was working on in grad school, like Lacan and mirror theory, and like so there's mirror, you know, obviously cities are mirrored, but Lavender yeah. and Red Navel is a mirror, and Shalea Crump and and Shay or mirrors, but like one, it, it's not happenstance that the first book ends at one fifty three, another one one thirty five. Like um, in terms of structure, I'm not gonna fuck with this structure again. I'm, I'm, I have a children's book coming out. Um, at, well, I have one coming out next year and then one the following year where a kid is on a bus and he's mm-hmm. sort of like making a tapestry of all of these people, and you know, so he's creating a book as we read a book. But that's as 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 much like this structure as I'll ever get. You know, I. I just needed to try to write myself into American literature with long division. That's what I was trying to do. And okay. I don't need to do that anymore. So I'm not going to do that again. Cool. Uh, Monica, 
Hi, Monica. Um, is any revision truer than any other? I read them as equally true. I guess she talked about two books. You know, she says whatever that means for this book. Oh, that's tough. Um, yeah, man, I was. It was just so hard to get that first book out, like to get Long Division out. It was just, uh, you know, I had to give Penguin back some money. I had to pretty much do it without an agent. You know, I had to sign my whole fucking real talk life over to this bullshit ass publisher. Um, so, like, the heart that went into that is something mm -hmm. I could never replicate. But okay. to but but to earn myself to a place where I could go back and make sure now that that person doesn't get the rewards of it going forward and I could shift some things artistically, like that, mm -hmm. means, that, that means the world to me too, you know? Yeah, yeah. No, I feel that. I think, you know, and then and just to add a, a piece of that, I just feel like, you know, what you felt was true when you were in a different place might not feel the same right. way. And I think that that's also uh, reflected in, in, the, in the novel and also how you approached it. So there's that. Uh, so you're going to have to do it for me, folks. Uh, Roderick says, if Long Division had a playlist, what would be some of the tracks that correlate to the novel? I, I done told you there was a couple on there, but wh which one stand out for you, fam? You said Al Green was on there a little bit. <laughs> oh, yeah. They said Catalactica, South of My Mind. Oh, that man, a yeah. long, long time. No, all, all, of those would be, <laughs> all, of those, all of those would be on there. Um, you know, uh, the art of storytelling one and two yeah. um, would, would definitely still be on there. Um, you know, the the second book starts with the uh window seat uh by Badu. Um yeah, you did that shit on purpose. You you were still connecting Dre and Badu. You want yeah, to we'll try, to, we'll try to do a little bit of that and, and her, her line uh I don't want to time travel no more. Um I wanna be free. Uh um so 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 and then there's a song called uh Monsters in the Night by Halona King. Um and that yeah, I, I talked about that in the in the joint like that that one. But also, you know, that Bessie Smith, uh, um, the flood, what's the name of that uh, blues? Uh, Rain from day. <laughs> I forgot what it's called. It's called it's called something blues that I, I was just listening to that song, actually. Um, yeah. So and, 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 and also, I think the overall song, I think Mount Olympus. Is like yes. I think that's the overall theme song for my for all for my job for my ooh or whatever the fuck you know what I'm saying like it I ain't think just you so it ain't just you like you know we've been out here now you want to hear a nigga rap okay us. now you want to hear country yeah, 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 yeah. right right I'm dead. I, you know so that's that's our shit that's our shit yeah I would put free by goody mob on there too oh like, yes anything on there but backwater yeah blues. I, that's it backwater blues thank you Monica. Yeah, man. And then uh, we got a, another question from Audrey. Uh, do you have a certain kind of reader in mind? Uh, do you want white people to read your work? You mentioned subject, so I wasn't sure if you wanted white readers. <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, I, I feel like I always think that's a really interesting question. I, I really love it, too. I'm not going to, you know, I'm not, I don't have enough. My family doesn't have enough money. For me to be like, I don't want any group of people to read my shit. Like, no shit. Yeah. I, I just, we don't have enough money to take, you know, I'm talking about my family. Mm -hmm. So, and I, there's so many different kinds of white people, but, but I'm going to just flip that. There's certain kinds of people and white and a lot of white people who I don't want to like it. <laughs> Do you know what I'm trying to say? Like, like there's some people who like, I did not want to tell me that they liked heavy because I didn't trust the sensibility. And I thought if they liked it, I'd done something wrong. I don't think that's all white people or most white people or anything like that. But you know, I, you know, I, I like the white readers who's like, oh my God, I don't know how you did it, but you, you took these black things and you made them feel so universal. I don't really want to hear that. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't really, you know, I, I, I mean, you do what you want to with the work, but but yeah, like, you know, it's, and also we know like our, you know, your agent who was my former student is white. You know what I mean? Like my agent who is my boy, PJ Mark is white. My editor who is, you know, my girl, my, like, that's my, that's my girl. She white too. So, and they're critical white people. And, right. you know, right. and, but, but so I, yeah, I'm not, I'm not doing that, that Lauren Hill shit. She, you know, I don't want the white people to, you know, shit like, you know, <laughs> 
only about three, four million, I might be on that shit. But you know, but I, right now, I can't do that. Like, if you want to fuck with the book, fuck with it. But like, you're gonna have to I do some like, work. Can, but I mean, like, I guess a, a caveat for me would be like, read the book. You know what I'm saying? But don't expect to be the center of it. I think that's like, like low key. That's a lot of white folks' concern is that they're not center to it. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. they feel like they're not central to it, then it ain't for them to read. And I'm like, but the reality of that shit is, it's like, nah, you need to read this shit because you're not central to it. You know what I mean? So, yeah. I, mean, I, I, I think that's the thing about what we do. Like, we we create Black Southern art. Like, and so right. people, like, it's it's for Black Southern art makers. And we, and I think Black Southern art makers are people who've never stepped into a studio, never typed on a computer. You know what I'm saying? Who am I writing for? Primarily Black Southern art makers. Like, my granny. You, you know what I'm saying? Your, mm-hmm. your mama, your grandmama, you know, like you, your partner, your your daughter, like these are black art, black son of art makers. That doesn't mean that I'm not thinking about all these other folks. Right. That gets the front row and everything I create. No, that's that's real. Thank you, Audrey, for your comment. And then I guess one more comment and then ER, you can you can take it over. Uh from Iman, such a pleasure to see you two in conversation. Many thanks for making yourselves accessible to us on these platforms. Incredibly inspiring, grateful. So thank you so much for coming, Iman. We really, we really appreciate that. We we have wide ranging conversations. Y'all don't y'all don't understand. <laughs> Man, listen, I I'm just I'm just I'm just so thankful that we can still be here creating good shit and 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 standing a little a little firmer than we were a few years ago. Real talk. You know what I mean? And when and when I talk about the internet, I just want to say when you did that outcasted conversations, fam, and nobody had done that, and you got together people who've never been in conversation with one another, who should have been in conversation with each other decades earlier. Like that's what I'm trying to say. The people who were brought here as technology have used technology to get us freer. Mm. It's much more complicated than that, and is that. And you to me are like the perfect example of that. So, fam, thank you for being literally like the trillist. I always tell you this, there's nobody out there that does what you do, not just how you do it, but like what you do, like you the only person out there who does it. And I just feel really lucky every time we get to talk, uh, whether it's publicly or privately. So thank you. Yeah. Love you. Love you forever. PSA. You always, you always know that shit. So uh, we're going to really get to act there because I'm going to see you next month at the Mississippi Book Festival and uh, I might not let go. So just, just understand. <laughs> if, 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 if they better get that Delta under control. They better get that Delta under control. Yeah, it's Lambda now, fam. Lambda. Yeah, there's a new variant. I said, you know what, goddammit? I I can't. But yeah, so. ER, you can can take over. And D'Artricia, of course, you're my favorite all day. Always. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Thank you both so much. Uh, This is a beautiful conversation. So much craft in this. Um, We're really, really every time just learning so much from both of you so um i want to let folks know you just click this teal button at the bottom center of your screen that's going to take you directly to buy the paper book paperback version of long division but if you want the hardback version because you are a collectible book person and you like a hardback that is available as well and it's same cover beautiful so don't don't be dissuaded from getting the hardback they're both there um, we also have Regina's books, of course, um, How to Slowly Kill Yourself and Others in America, and Heavy. So if you are new to either of these folks tonight and you are missing a book in your collection, we are very happy to help hook it up. Um, and we would love for y'all, if you are new to Karis, to please follow along um, You know, with our events. We do tons of stuff during the pandemic. Because of these deltas, I hadn't heard about the Lambda yet, but we're going to stay safe or safer, do our best. So we're going to be virtual for a while longer. Um, so we feel like we can keep our folks safe. So um, we'll be here. We would love for you to be here with us. Um, but until we are able to physically gather, um, Regina Kie say thank you so much for all you do. I hope that y'all are staying safe and healthy and well and get some good rest and get to enjoy yourselves a little bit. Um, but thank you for your generosity to Karis um, and to the literary world in general. It's always a gift to be with y'all. Thank y'all. All right. Peace All right. out. Good night.